So over the last six months or so, I've seen a lot of videos about which is better, Rome or Notion. Um, and I probably was party to some of those conversations along the way. But as many have discovered, including me, I think there's not one is better, but they're better in different ways. And there's a good case to use both. Um, so I've seen a lot of videos that talk about how people use Rome and Notion together. And I've gotten a lot out of those. And I thought I'd throw in my two cents about how I use them together and where I put things. So the way I work through this um, internally, and now I'm sharing it with you, is just making a list of some of the main uses for both tools and trying to figure out which place makes the most sense for that data. And if I put one piece of data in a certain tool, should I put more pieces with it? So to some degree, I've sort of put everything in Notion, then moved everything to Rome, and I've kind of come back a little bit and I'm sort of finding that balance. And I think I've gotten to a pretty good place and I'm sure this will continue to change, but here's kind of where I am. So I help run a web agency. So we have a lot of stuff. Um, in these tools, mostly in Notion. We have our CRM. I've done videos about that before you can check out. That's going to stay in Notion. I mean, Notion is better structure for that kind of thing. Uh, better team access just makes sense. Uh, we have a content calendar in there as well for uh, when we're posting things on Facebook and Twitter and stuff. That's staying in Notion for the same reasons. Just good structure, good calendar view, easy to tag things in, easy for the team to use. Just makes a lot more sense. And then we have our main contacts database, which really will be in both. Um, if you're going through and, you know, logging events and stuff in Rome, you're going to tag people in there and it makes sense. But the main source will remain in Notion uh, for a couple of reasons. One, so the team can access it easier. We can tie it into the CRM pieces, tie it into projects, that sort of thing. And uh, that's also the best, not best, easiest way, I think, though, to just have fields in the database for phone number and email address and company and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so both places will be, but Notion will remain the main source of data about a person, but then I can still go into Rome and kind of see where I've interacted with them, what we've talked about, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the next is interesting. I split these in two, but we have scheduled events and calls and unplanned events and calls. And the reason I have them separate is for a little while, it didn't work well. I had them separate where I was having my daily event schedule in Notion, but the kind of tagging in extra things as they came up in Rome and quickly realized that was kind of silly to have them separate. Um, I love the, the way you can schedule and block things out in Notion is great, but Rome is just so much easier for flowing through your day. So scheduled events and calls was in Notion, now back to Rome. Uh, this doesn't count team stuff. If we have a call with a client with our team, that's all in Google Docs still and will be for the foreseeable future. Uh, for no other reason really than Google Docs live multiplayer stuff is just killer. Um, as soon as one of these tools gets that, that may change things, but uh, just works great. We have folders in Google Docs for all of our clients and for meetings, and we'll do that. But for my notes, my calls and stuff, that's all going back in Rome. So every day I'm going to schedule out the events I have, take notes in those events during the thing. And then as other things come up, when Steve randomly calls me at 2.30, I'll jot a note in Rome that Steve called me at 2.30 and you know make notes about that call as needed. So I think it makes sense to keep those in one place. And the unplanned stuff works so much better in Rome that I'm going to put the planned stuff in there as well. Uh, to the extent possible. And even for the scheduled stuff, I'm taking notes in a different document. I'll have a link to that document in Rome so I can quickly jump into it with the team and take care of stuff there. It's not unlike I have book notes and books to read as two separate items. Um, the book notes, I think it's pretty easy, always Rome. Always has been, foreseeably, for, for the foreseeable future, it will be too. Rome was just made for this kind of thing, for adding in book notes and doing progressive summarization and linking to ideas and topics and just works great. Um, I see no decent way to do that in Notion. I mean, you could always just have a database and put your notes in there, but they kind of just get lost. Rome is awesome for this. But Notion, you can do some cool things with the Kanban charts and stuff. And I actually have some videos about how I have lists of books to read in Notion. And that works well. And for a little while, again, I had them split where I would keep my little Kanban of books I want to read. And then when I finished, I'd put the final notes in Rome, which you could do. That's not necessarily a bad thing because it's not like you're going through at least most of a whole bunch of books in a day or whatever. It's, you know, every couple of weeks I'd have a new book. So I could do them separate, but I am putting it back in Rome just to keep it in one place. If I'm going to have a whole page about the book, I may as well tag it as something I want to read and tag it in my daily events of what's going on. It just makes more sense to keep them together. So they're both back into Rome. Uh, the exercise log. So this is where I just kind of mark down, hey, I ran three miles today. I walked two miles today. The family went hiking six miles today to the waterfall. You know, whatever we have, you know, push-ups or P90 or whatever exercise, um, I really wanted that to work in Rome. Just again, because I'm kind of tagging my day as I go through, I may as well just mention that. And I had a had some exercise stuff in there uh, with some metadata. The problem is it's just hard to get that stuff out. It's, it's difficult to see like, how many miles did I run this quarter? How many miles did we walk last year? How many miles did I walk in the last six months with my wife? Like, it's just difficult to get that kind of stuff out with the attribute tables and stuff you can do in Rome. 
I think that will probably change in the future as they make those more and more powerful. So it may come back. But for now, that's going to stay in Notion just because Notion, I mean, that's what their Airtable-like databases are made for is this kind of thing where I can just have a single exercise log and put in what I did and have a little drop down. Was this a run or a walk or a hike or whatever it was? How far did I go? What route did I do? Tag people I went with. It just works great in Notion. Wish I could make it work in Rome. And again, I think I will at some point in the future. But for now, Notion is great. Weekly planning is a tough one. I've done videos on how I've done weekly planning in both Notion and in Rome, and I keep kind of going back and forth. Ultimately, where I am with that, though, is I'm going to have all my events in Rome. I'm going to do my weekly planning in Rome because that simply makes sense to work through the next week ahead, add the events in, see what's going on, look at the week past. It just doesn't make sense to try to do that in Notion. So all that's going in Rome now, but you can see I have um, a pretty good video about weekly planning in Notion that it really does work well. Uh, but again, if all those events are going to be in Rome, the planning is going to be in Rome with it. Tasks are another one that could go either way. Um, I love the idea of the way Notion keeps it structured, makes it easy. I can keep it on my dashboard there. But Rome, it's kind of nice while you're kind of working through your day just to throw tasks in there quickly. Uh, for now, I think I'm going to stay in Notion, but this one I'm probably the softest on. I've gone both ways with this before. And part of it in my case is I don't have that many tasks. Um, our agency uses teamwork projects for our main project management tasks, and that's kind of where the bulk of my stuff lives. So this is just for mowing the lawn and picking up things and maybe you know scheduling some videos and just little stuff. It's not a lot of things in there. So I think Notion makes the most sense, especially as I clean out some of this other stuff in Rome. My dashboard in Notion will get a little simpler so I could have a little you know tasks uh, bucket off to the side there. I think that'll work pretty well, but I could argue both ways there. But for me, for now, that stuff's going to stay in Notion. Spaced repetition. I've done uh, some videos on how I do this in Notion, and I've seen some good videos on how you can do it in Rome. Uh, but for me, though, I'm not going to do either. I'm going to stick with Anki. Uh, Notion, I think, works better for this than Rome. Um, I have the video where you can see that with the formulas and stuff. You can use some pretty powerful things fairly easily where it'll do proper spaced repetition per item. Whereas with Rome, you're really kind of doing the Leitner box method where you kind of drag them into different boxes. Then periodically you open up different boxes and check the cards there. And it, it works pretty well, but kind of gives you big days and small days where the version of Notion kind of blends things out a bit more. Uh, but for me, Anki just worked so well. The algorithm's so good. It works. It's offline, essentially. It syncs, but it's offline. So on my phone, I tell it to sync, and then it's just sunk. And I can work with it. I'm not worried about a connection. You know, Rome and Notion both don't have the best mobile apps. And I do a lot of Anki stuff just as I'm tooling around the house or walking or whatever. I'm kind of working through that. And so Anki just works so well for that. So for now, that's staying in, in Anki. Um, again, Notion and Rome both have ways to make it happen, but that's sticking there. And then bookmarks have been the trickiest thing for me lately. This is the one I've really been digging into. And as I've thought through it, I've discovered there's really three kinds of bookmarks. Um, so I, yeah, I played a lot of tools like Raindrop and some of the other ones that are focused on bookmarks, and they're good. Um, I built out a new tab page. I said in Notion, actually in Chrome is what I meant. I like pull in my bookmarks when I hit new tab, like it'll pull in my bookmarks. I thought that could be kind of cool. Uh, there's a lot of Chrome extensions to customize that new tab page. Uh, but yeah, I realized there are really three kinds of bookmarks, and so I treat them appropriately. There's the quick access stuff, the stuff I need to get to a lot, just to add things into, to access my banking account, to access Facebook, to access certain message boards that I go to a lot. I want any quick access to stuff. So those are just going to stay in, uh, in examples like, yeah, Google's public DNS cache. So I pull that up like once a week or so. If you're migrating a website from one server to another, this can help speed it along to clear their cache. So um, I don't have that URL memorized, so I can just click it in there. And I keep those in Chrome. Just in the Chrome bookmarks, mostly in that bookmark bar just across there. A few tucked into the deeper bookmarks. But anything I need quick access to, the Chrome bookmarks work fine. You know, on Windows a lot. I'm on Chromebooks a lot. They sync to my mobile. Like It does everything I need to do there. The second kind of bookmark is I need to check this out. I see someone shared a link, shared an article, shared a video. and like, I need to read or watch this thing later. I don't have time right now, but I don't want to forget about it. So that, for me, goes into Pocket. Um, I played with dropping it into places in Rome. I think Notion could work a little bit better for that to put it somewhere. Uh, but if I haven't looked at it yet, it's going to go in Pocket. Just so that way I can pull up Pocket when I have some time, read through things. And then when I, if it's any good, if it's not any good, I just read it, whatever, and move on. But if I like it and want to remember it, then if I want to go back later, what was that cool thing I saw? All that stuff's in Rome. Because if I go to Pocket and watch a great video or read a great article, I'm going to go into my just no daily notes in Rome and mention it. I'm going to say, hey, I read this great article. I pulled out these three things from it. There was this great quote from this guy and you know, kind of make some notes about it. And so I can always go back and search through Rome to find that cool thing I saw. 
Um, so yeah, so quick access goes just in the Chrome bookmarks, um, things I want to check out in the future go in Pocket, and if it's worth saving for the future in Rome. Uh, Rome's a little harder to search than just a quick access bar, but again, in the grand scheme of things, if I need it a lot, it's there. The things in Rome are usually part of a bigger question or deeper discussion, so I, I'm okay with spending some time digging through to find that. So that's a super quick look at where I am with those together. I'd love to see your comments, though, about how you guys are using the two tools together and where you like to put things or other areas that I've not even considered that you say, I've kind of carved this out and I think this is better in Rome because of this reason or notion for that reason or whatever. Uh, do share your thoughts and yeah, love to see it. Thanks so much.